Good afternoon and welcome to the Midday News. Here's what we have in the bulletin. Legal team representing Dancehall Entertainer Vibes Cartel says they will be applying for bail. Westmoreland police looking to arrest more persons from Sunday's altercation with lawmen. And later in sports, J3A announced Carifta track and field team. Thank you for joining us. I'm Karian Simpson. Here are the details. The legal teams representing Dan Sol Entertainer Vibes Cartel and his co-accused are calling yesterday's ruling from the Privy Council a win. Cartel's attorneys have revealed that they will now be appealing for applying rather for bail. The details in this report. Anxious but not nervous. That's the feeling from at least one of the lawyers representing Adija Pama, the dancehall entertainer known as Vibes Cartel, while watching yesterday's ruling by Justice David Lloyd Jones of the UK based Judicial Committee of the Privy Council. Ms. Alessandra Beach says with the convictions now quashed, the team is ready to move forward. These men have been away for over a decade. And so we wanted to have the best decision for them and we would have hoped that they would have been reunited with their families yesterday. That did not happen, but we still consider the outcome a win because now they do not have that conviction against their names anymore. Ms. Labid shared the legal options now available coming out of the new development. It is within the realm of possibilities that they w might decide to take the route of um, taking action against the state for what has been done to them. They, they could just decide, listen, we have gotten our day, we have been vindicated by the highest courts in our land and all is well. Yeah. And they move forward and go on to excel and thrive. She explained the process for the bail application to be made. There is a procedure. There are certain things that have to be done and it depends on whether or not there are any conditions and stipulations that the court may wish to make. but. It is possible that if the bail application is made in the usual course of any bail application, yeah. that they could get bail and go home the same day. It depends yeah. on certain things being done by persons who wish to assist them in getting the bail yeah. done. It's now left up to the legal system to determine the time for the bail application to be processed. The police are raising concerns about the high incidence of physical altercation when trying to apprehend persons who break the law. Commanding Officer for Westmoreland, Wayne Joseph, says this affects policing. Pointing to an incident on Sunday in Westmoreland, he says while there have been arrests, the police are still searching for other persons. There are other persons who participated that are known to the police and we will not stop until we apprehend these persons and bring them to books because persons might think that it is fashionable to do so but they don't realize how detrimental it can be to, 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 to them in terms of um, sooner or later you might want to apply for some job locally or abroad and you need a police record. It will affect your records. The story of a Clarendon resident who narrowly escaped death after his home was firebombed. The Tollgate resident is now seeking the public's help. Dwayne Anderson reports. Smoke and flames awoke the occupants of this house around three Sunday morning. The home had been firebombed with Molotov cocktails by unknown persons. Two senior citizens lived at the premises. 65-year-old Roy Thompson did not make it. He died after attempting to retrieve some of his possessions from the house when a section of the structure collapsed with him inside. The other occupant is a man called Raymond. Despite his limitations, he knew he had to escape. I have one leg, but I have still come out, man. They, yeah, they come out of the house. You know, see that the man, they have two legs and boil up. I have one leg, me, but I have to jump out. He's sticky in the house, he's wheelchair, but I'm going to find a way to come out the front grill lock. You know, see? No motive has been established for the attack. I'm, I'm confused as to why anyone would have, would really want to hurt him. 
for his family. That has me in confusion. Because he's a gentleman well known and well loved in this community all through these years that I've known him. And I think that needs to be made very clear. So I'm, I'm just hoping that the authorities will do some heavy in, um, investigation to ensure and we pray that whoever it is that has um, done this cruel act is really um, found and dealt with. The fire victim is equally puzzled what could have triggered the incident. Right now, this trust in mind, it just looks crazy and funny to me because me don't know what's going on. Me just see buckle bone flinging in the house because you know when you have a problem with people, you understand, so you know so me and somebody have a problem. Me and nobody know have no problem. So that's why me say I don't know what's going on. Facing an uncertain future, Mr. Raymond is now asking for assistance. With a prime minister or whatsoever, somebody we need some help because right now, I don't have nowhere to live. Right now, and he was, you know, no way me now feel live or something when me know. And I like said, why me, I guess. Yeah. Nothing was saved from the flames. An estimate of the damage to the four bedroom dwelling is not yet known. Dwayne Anderson, TVJ News. Jamaicans, particularly those suffering from hypertension and diabetes, are being urged to screen annually for kidney disease, for kidney disease in order to, to reduce the risk of end-stage renal failure. More details in this report. Uncontrolled diabetes and blood pressure are the leading cause of renal failure worldwide. With more and more Jamaicans developing the illnesses, health authorities are concerned. Speaking at a recent health fair in Manchester, nurse manager at the Mandeville Regional Hospital's renal unit, Marika Davis-Miller, underscored the importance of adopting a healthy lifestyle to prevent severe illness. She says the treatment of renal failure continues to be a major health burden on local hospitals. It is easier when you catch the kidney disease at an early stage where it can be reversible and the leading cause worldwide, one of the leading causes worldwide is uncontrolled blood pressure. That's what leads to kidney disease. So therefore, the blood pressure check here is very crucial in that. And at our renal unit, we have 12 stations. So unfortunately, in order for any patient to get on the system, somebody would have to die to get a spot there. Mrs. Davis Miller says although renal health sensitization has improved compared to last year, the country still has a far way to go. What I've noticed on a whole is that unfortunately Jamaica is not really a okay with kidney disease and the negative impact it can have on somebody's life. Because the main treatment for a replacement therapy for kidney disease in Jamaica is hemodialysis and for the persons who work you would have to take two days out of your work schedule to go on the machine so that is unfortunate and we want to prevent that and prevent a lot of persons from coming down with the illness. Meanwhile, Health Minister Dr. Christopher Tofton is encouraging the public to take advantage of the island-wide Know Your Numbers campaign to get screening. If we had gone to the doctor once a year at least, even if we feel healthy, and have the doctor check the blood pressure, check the blood sugar level, and the doctor say, listen man, the blood pressure is like high, you have to cut back on the salt. Then if you take action and cut back on the salt, all of a sudden, the risk of getting a stroke is diminished. Amoy Harriet, TVJ News. Ready to serve again, that assurance from Mayor of Falmouth, Colin G G Gager, in response to residents. He says several plans are in the making for the parish. Following demands from residents in Trelawney to address issues they want to address, re-elected chairman of the Trelawney Municipal Corporation, Colin Gager, has responded. One of the main um, legacy that is here is the bus or park that was started under my watch. And of course, you know, we have, we have come a long way because we now have it paved. The only thing left is for the, 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 the um, sheds to be put in place so that the people can be safer 
away from the rain or the sun. He says that will be completed in the fastest possible time. Among the issues the residents demanded is the cleaning and beautification of the town, especially as it's considered a tourist destination. We have been working hand in hand with Port Authority. We have been working in the town. We are doing all that we can. And from time to time, we have meetings because right now there's another meeting plan where they should be getting that invitation to that meeting to see how we work together. And as for garbage collection, Mr. Gager says maintenance plans are in place to address that and a penalty will be enforced for violators. Someone will have a call me and say, listen, there is garbage here or a uh, uh, Chinese just put out a load of garbage, but it will be monitored and immediately as that is done, contact will be made with the solid waste. We have already arranged with them for them to do what we are working on is for them to have a night collection. If a night collection is done, then you won't have the congestion with the trucks in the morning. In the meantime, the chairman says other plans are in the making to address issues in the parish. It's time for a break. Stay with us. More stories when we return. Welcome back to the Midday News. A clergyman is challenging councillors in the Manchester Municipal Corporation to be accountable and to act with integrity as they carry out their duties. Speaking at Thursday's Manchester, Manchester Municipal Swearing-In Ceremony, the clergyman charged the councillors to ignore the noises around them and focus on what they need to do. The time has come that the needs of the majority take precedence over the pet peeves, the power, the pride of the articulate and privileged minority. He is also for calling for the political representatives to acknowledge the reality of every person they represent. And hold them with the esteem that they are due and not when once you have their vote, discard and disregard them and their needs for special interests. It's now time for the Business Minute. The government is urging private sector players to suggest amendments to laws that could make business processes easier. Industry and Commerce Minister Aubin Hill says business leaders must take an active role in discussions pertaining to legislation. We in government need you to be a lot more proactive. You don't write. In other countries, the private sector, them have holy lobbies and them take the law and them draft the law and say, Mr. Congressman, my senator, this is the law I want done. None of that work is being done. Not much of it is being done by the private sector. A lot more of it must be done. You're using it. You see a law that doesn't make sense or a place where there should be some regulation. You have lawyers. Draft the thing, bring it to me. I will have my technical people look at it and I will take it to cabinet, which is the first step, and then to parliament. Further afield, a widespread system outage forced McDonald's to temporarily suspend operations at thousands of restaurants around the world. The fast food chain says Friday's outages were not related to any cybersecurity event. However, no further details were given. The outage affected restaurants, mobile ordering, and self-ordering kiosks. Countries affected include the US, Japan, the United Kingdom, Australia, and Taiwan. And that's it for the Business Minute. I'm Shane Masters. Now for the top regional and international stories. In the region, 
Authorities in Haiti have again extended the curfew in the country's west region amid surging gang violence. The 7 p.m. to 5 a.m. curfew will now last until March 17. In the meantime, the country is still set to receive a United Nations-backed multinational police team from Kenya once the planned Transitional Presidential Council is formed. On the international scene, U.S. President Joe Biden says his administration is considering using the American naval base in Guantanamo Bay, Cuba, to process Haitian migrants. For years, the bay, which is located about 200 miles from Haiti, has had a migrant center to hold and process migrants before returning them to Haiti or to a third country. Now, migrants from Haiti would likely attempt to reach Florida by sea, and the U.S. is weighing plans to take those intercepted at sea and transport them to Guantanamo for processing and potential repatriation. And at least three people are dead, several others injured and thousands of buildings destroyed following several suspected tornadoes that swept across Ohio, Indiana and Kentucky in the U.S. Thursday night. Law enforcement officials are conducting search and rescue efforts as they say residents could still be trapped inside buildings and in debris. At last check, the National Weather Service was still working to confirm if the devastation was caused by a tornado. And those were the top regional and international stories. I'm Amoy Harriet. We now head to a quick break. When we come back, we'll have your midday sports report with Jeremy Brown.